Muffins. Here, giving us a recap of what happened last episode is Muffin. Go! <laughs> Do I really have to? <laughs> no. It's awfully heroic music for what happened. Go ahead. <laughs> Alright, um... Last time on D&D, we died. The end. It's all your fault too, you little druid piece of shit! It's not my fault! It's one third his <laughs> fault, but it was, it was the last third, so... <laughs> everyone simply believes it was his fault. We are now constantly nope. in the realm of the dead, the afterlife, and all that jazz. No, it's constantly. because no one knows what happened because we're all dead and we're new people. Yeah, so you just blame Barry anyways. <laughs> God damn it, Barry. The history blames Barry. Yeah. All right. If it wasn't you, for that Barry. druid. All right, so let's begin. All right, who put a Welcome token down? Everyone. Welcome, everyone, to session zero. Oh. Bad Moki. I can't even see anything. It's all black. Same. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to. Let's see. Uh, I need to... Because I know what he was trying to do. I was just clicking. Sure. Alright. You don't know where you are. It's dark. You can hardly see anything. Eternal. Character's name is Gilly. Gilly, yeah. as you come to, you rub your eyes and try to figure out where you are. You eventually adjust to the dim light as you notice that you are standing in a dark cell full of hay. Hey! Mm, boy. Mm, mm. This place is grimy. Alright, I'm just getting the just getting the uh the twitch window adjusted. So I can actually see what's going on. Mm. There we go. You, shall... you are inside a prison cell wearing nothing but very simple clothing. Why me? You're pretty sure you're you've got a pounding headache almost as if it was a hangover. But this one hurts even more. Hi there, I'm your cellmate Bubba. You look pretty. Mm. You are alone in your cell. <laughs> Nala Lokog. Who I'm going to just call Nala. You awaken are with several bruises on your arms. As well as some, some rope binding your arms. You are in a pile of hay. Everything smells terrible. Can I reach my the rope that's tied around me? The rope is tied around your wrists. Oh, well, easily. I can just manifest a dagger and start cutting that. You manifest a dagger and immediately start cutting at your... At, at your... Bindings. Bindings. Thank you, I cannot brain properly. Brain, good, not. You slip, miss, stab yourself. Now you accidentally bleeding. cut your wrists. <laughs> Lighting oh, hurt. Guards. Brawlwin, or Braywin. You come to in a dirty cell. Your neck kind of aches. It hurts. You, you're not entirely sure where you are. I am Uncle McTouchy Feelings. Doesn't matter. Pleasure I go to the corner to take a piss. That's, uh, quite disturbing. <laughs> I've been here many times in the past. No, you have not. Alright, I lied. I you've, don't know where you've I'm been at. To, you've been to many different- <laughs> you've been to many prisons in the past, but this one seems different. You're not entirely sure what's going on. Rivar, you awaken. In a prison cell. You are covered Silver in... Silver lining here. Go ahead. The hay is a lot more comfortable than random stone caves. So I'm just going to roll over and go back to sleep. <laughs> your legs ache as you're not entirely sure where you are, but the hay is comfortable. 
You're not entirely sure where you want. You should go try and go back to sleep. Disorientation always makes my legs ache. Maris, you come to in a cold, dark cell with some rotten hay in it. You're not entirely sure where you are, but over in the corner is a, is an, is a gnome eyeing you. Oh my! <laughs> he's got I, he's I, got I, this look in his eyes that you're 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 not too comfortable with. In gnomish, Maris will say, "You, stay a hell away from me. I don't know you." I will go to the other corner. <laughs> he's gonna keep winking at you. <laughs> in your goddamn dream eventually you all your eyes adjust to the light and you're able to see that you're in some sort of dungeon you're not sure how you got there but you're sure that you deserve it for the, you know what you no. did Didn't you especially not even Boris put on ourselves do you look at the door? Are you looking Can at I, the door? Uh, I'm trying to get an sure. idea. You look at where doors are, should normally be. Because dungeons usually have walls to keep prisoners inside. However, there is nothing there. In fact, weirder than there's nothing there, there wasn't even anything there to begin with. There were no hinges, no places where iron bars should be. The doors are open. Oh, so we can just walk out. You can just walk. Or we out. could stay here. Or you could stay there. It's up to you. I guess I'm gonna get walk all the out hay then. together. Make uh... yourself a equivalent of like a king size bed. We could live large. All right, I've walked out and I look around. You look around noticing that you are indeed in some kind of dungeon. There are torches along the walls and what appear to be arrow slits in the ceiling that is about 20 feet up. It is made of, the entire place is made of stonework, really well done as well. This isn't your, this isn't some second rate dungeon. Um, this little opening here, is there anything that we can see down this way? There is an archway to the south, and above it you can see a plaque. It is written in the common tongue. It says, Welcome to the Eternal Prison. Alright guys, we're pretty fucked. Who wants to die first? Who are you talking to? Everybody else in here. You don't know once, these people. <laughs> once I my volunteers tribute. Uh, once my bindings are cut, I'm going to dismiss my dagger and call forth a scimitar instead. You I'm call forth a scimitar. And then I walk out of the room. <laughs> so there are torches on the wall. There are torches on the wall. I'm guessing wherever that little red glowing light is? Yes. I'm going to pick one up. You reach to touch the wall, but you get zapped by a small shock, taking 1d6 electric damage. <laughs> it seems someone doesn't oh, want you to shot? touch the torches. <laughs> wow, the dungeon keep of this dungeon's a dick. <laughs> it's almost like you did something super terrible to get here. I did nothing wrong. I think I smoked weed in a state that was illegal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, right, I'm gonna tear me... down to the south. So... Oh, yeah. There's what not... Exact... Go ahead. What exactly is Nala seeing as she walks out of here? She looks upon these people. What do these people look like? All right. Nala sees a dwarf peering around the corner, probably trying to get a good look at everyone before introducing himself. She also sees... I'm trying to look at everyone's sheet here. You could have each player just introduce themselves, visually. Where's yeah, the fun in that? that? 
Let's do that. She also sees Braywin, but doesn't know it's Braywin's name. Braywin, what does Nala see? A sturdy human, standing about 5'9", red hair. Am I naked or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone's, everyone's got, like, prisoner's clothes, like, sackcloth, basically. Okay. Okay, then that's pretty much all you see on me. And I'm snarling at the no, because he immediately approached me too quickly. <laughs> it, it is like he wants to way. die! <laughs> Nella also sees a gnome. Boris, the love gnome. Describe your character. <laughs> He dies first, if that's literally his title. <laughs> you know what? Uh, <laughs> why don't all the play people playing female characters roll a history check? I don't want to all of a sudden. <laughs> you know what? I'm I feel already dirty. <laughs> <laughs> <Really good. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Braywin, you've heard stories throughout the kingdom of such a carouser of a man known as Boris the Love Gnome. You thought it was you thought it was a some sort of sort of a jab, a nickname at at just kind of a short man who's, you know, good at wooing the ladies. But indeed it is a gnome named Boris. You assume that this is one and the same. The gnome that goes around wooing women of all all types and species and races. My snarl well, quickly turns into a face of disgust. Well, <laughs> the good thing is, this makes sense for knowledge to roll a seven on because she's not from any nearby kingdoms. Mm, neither is Maris. So no, yeah, that makes this is just a creepy gnome to you. Yeah. It's, it's like really thinking about just Killing the gnome outright right you now. You also see Rivar. It's a half elf wrapped tightly in whatever sackcloth they give us here. Probably also covered in hay from how long I spent down there. <laughs> how usually you not molded with the hay, become one with it, were born in it? Molded Quite a bit disheveled, it. but you know, used to it. You also see Maris at the far end of the hallway. A short human female, uh, as pale as in the picture, with the dark raven black hair and eyes that are steel gray. And also, uh, she doesn't look anything special. But it's wise. Maybe a little buffer than average human, but other than that, not much. Okay. And you all in return see a seven foot three woman <laughs> with long flowing uh, brown hair tied back in a long single braid. Uh, she would have these tribal tattoos etched in all across, down from her arms to her wrist in the back of her hand. And if you can see any parts of her leg, it seems down to her feet as well. Uh, outside of her wielding this unnaturally huge scimitar as you see her walk out of her cell, you do notice one other very peculiar thing around her. Her right eye is this mountain blue color. Her left eye, completely pitch black. Very interesting. I don't right, trust that right eye. To the no. <laughs> I don't you trust the right eye. I went to a cleric, paid some gold, he got it all cleared up. So, and she's going to say to all of you in common, Which of you fools... Dared to imprison a member of the Vi Mai Laga clan. Uh, none of us? We're all in here too? Yeah, can't you see? 
We all are kind of in a Tatars here. She has intelligence seven, so <laughs> <laughs> first thing, so first thing that like, it go, immediately just goes over her head, which is why she asks the question, and then she just goes. As she while she had the thing, some this scimitar somewhat ready, just in case it's like oh. She looks down at her clothing, looks at the rest of your guys' clothing, just goes like, oh, right. Um, so does anyone need the bindings cut off? It seems that none of the other characters have had their had but are have been bound with leather cords. Uh, I think you're the only one. Oh, well. What the hell did you do to deserve such binding? I'm scared I, now. I have no idea what you're talking about. As the ethereal scimitar just disappears in our hand and vanishes into the ether. This was never Ooh. here. <laughs> Neat trick. Oh god! <laughs> what the <laughs> hell is that? As soon as he jumps for the core, I immediately charge him. <laughs> I'm like, Goblin! Uh, uh, I you immediately charge the dwarf. <laughs> he, he failed that intimidation. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making tokens. Let's see. Oh, Tempting God. to scare everyone. No one is scared. You just jump out I of the corner and impressed. say something like, Ooga booga booga! <laughs> <laughs> Though your face is not something pleasant to look at, you're not very scary either. How would you describe your character? Other than ugly? How would I describe my character? Yes. Yes. Hung over as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so ugly. Amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> a very uh, ugly dwarf comes around the corner, muttering about a uh, more ale. Here, smoke this. You'll be good. <laughs> You do not have any product on you at this time. As he God over damn it! Hay. They took my product? They took your product. Oh, damn well. it! We got we gotta get the fuck out of here, guys. I'd hate to say this, but I think we now know why Boris is in this prison. <laughs> <laughs> As he yells about not having his product with him. Alright. As you all are kind of talking to yourselves and meeting each other. You notice a figure wandering from the south. Just kind of wander into this room up here. Just kind of wandering around. And he yells, I'm Captain Bosch. I'm Bosch von Rossenberger. I'm Bosch von <laughs> Rossenberg of Dalmasca. He's just kind of wandering around. Not really doing anything. Um, heads up. There's another one coming. Another what? Let's see if he notices you guys. I suppose the first order of business would be to ask him to identify himself, but he, he does. does seem to be doing that already. He can, he kind of looks at you, and then he perks up a bit, and then he starts walking towards you guys. It actually kind of looks like... It is Bosch, actually. Yeah, it's almost as if I pulled the Bosch just for a joke. He walks up. He says, ah, newcomers, eh? Welcome to the Eternal Prison. I'm Bosch von Rosenberg of Dalmasca. A what now? I'm Who Bosch von Rosenberg of Dalmasca. Me I mean, want this... Okay. I'm Captain Bosch! And then he hits the wall. He's like, sorry, it's been a long time. Where is this Dalmasca you speak of? It's a kingdom to the east. You probably never heard of it. You got that right. Pens, have you heard of the Great Plains of Nagir? Nope. <clears throat> okay. So what brings the seedy types like you 
What what brings some upstanding gentlemen as yourselves to the eternal prison? Wish I knew. I don't remember anything. At least I don't. Yeah, that'll pass. Anyways, welcome to Eternal Prison. Let me introduce you to the guys. And he's, he just kind of motions for you to follow him, and he walks down to the south. And we'll just... Well, don't just okay. stand there. Get out of the freaking way. Uh, yeah. Gilly's kind of ended up here. Wait. Oh, he has like five brothers. Yes. Brothers. He's just walking around. And he's like, "Here's the mess hall." Uh, I don't know why they built it. Do they, they don't have really beer? feed us much. <laughs> no. Dink it. He moves on. There's well, the bathrooms, I guess. Oh. You. I mean, there's nothing. But you gotta put it in the corner, you know. Yeah, okay. Also, guys, I'm just noticing there's three females here and nothing but male prisoners that probably haven't seen a female in a while. Don't you start You're making those guys? Sure. You can <laughs> take them out. <laughs> Boy, I'm the only one. I'm the here. only one who can e easily arm themselves. So yeah, I don't lose much in the way of my mm. combat ability. He says, "This is the communal hall. This is where we all hang out." Also, uh, uh, you have you have here because some of these yeah. other prisoners seem to look a lot like you. Yeah, that's my bro that's my brother Vosh. That's my brother Dosh. That's my brother Gosh. That's my brother Steve. Is Steve the one using the bathroom right now? Because we just really don't anyway to hide. He, he just leans in and he's like, Steve's adopted. Don't tell him. <laughs> what was that? He says, Yeah, well, this is where we all hang out. None of us have the guts to try and get past the goblins. So. Goblin? What? Yeah. Is this place exactly? It's the eternal prison. It's where we they send low lives and scumbags like us that are too good to die. This I'm he, honorable at merchant of Smith. Why am I here? Where are the goblins? They're I, too good to I, die. I know how to talk to goblins. Where are they? The goblins are just past the door. I wouldn't go that way though. They could kill you. They're ah. hungry. Well, I'm freaking thirsty. Well, the, I mean, how did we end up getting here if they couldn't get past the goblins outside? Probably threw us in from somewhere else. More importantly, what exactly are these goblins you all speak of? Oh, don't worry. The goblins are on the payroll. They're just kind of paid to kill anybody that gets out of line. The payroll? The way. Still don't know what these goblins are. They're uh, these small little creatures that smell and make annoying sounds. Anyways, also very I think violent. we have one of those banging on the door right now. I'm gonna make yourselves at home. Here. There's not Wait. really much else you can do. How do I get myself on this payroll? So, they're like goats then. <laughs> as you all do that, you know, like as he says the word goblins, Gilly's eyes light up and he runs back to the to the room that you pass through to like a giant stone door. Just starts banging on it like, "Get me a beer! I want to kill some <laughs> goblins." <laughs> okay, Cal, exactly. Cal, what are you inciting for? Checking around this room to see if there's anything that stands out because it's got the door that he's banging on. Other than the door, nothing really stands out. Nothing? Okay. I mean, some people have gotten past the goblins, but we're just too weak to do it. I see. How well, weak is weak? Have you tried all it? attempting together? At least one of you ought to make it out. Yeah, but we're... <laughs> You can tell that no one really wants to be that one. That has to stay behind, as it were. Next. Did we lose Ryu? 
What? Uh, oh, okay, I'm now the hey, there it is. Yeah, you're like you start too quiet. Yeah, you were like mid quiet, like right in the beginning of that sentence. Yeah, you like cut off. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mute in time. Sorry, it's fine. Uh, there we go. All right, I'll just up my sensitivity a bit. He basically just says, "Yeah, but." Nobody wants to be the one left behind, as it were. It's all, yeah, we're all just a bunch of cowards. But how... We, I still have no idea where I am currently. Do, do, the do eternal present. Have... That's all that matters. Do you guys oh, have any... In... Okay. Go ahead, go cow. On. Do you have anything in here that you guys can use as makeshift weapons or anything like that? I mean, we could go and grab a bench or something, but maybe you could find a stick you can use as a club. Every I now and then we just fight these, each other uh, with our fists. I wonder if we can use one of these benches to kind of batter around the door together. Oh, the door's not locked. You just gotta open it. What? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> well, there cool it's all dark. The, the hangover's been fucking banging on the door. He doesn't even try it. I'm looking at the mess hall area to figure out these tables and such. W what kind of materials are they made of? They're made of wood, but they look like they've been kind of rotten down a bit. I mean, it's like no one comes in to replace them. Is there any metal anywhere? Are these chambers? There's hot? like some iron to hold the hold the the wood together. What about the pots? Mm -hmm. Are these chamber pots where the bathrooms are? They look like they used to be chamber pots once, but now they're mostly covered in filth. They don't get changed. They must not get changed Ramirez. very often. Have at it. Okay, I'm going to activate my Eldritch Sight, which is pretty much just at will free cast to detect magic. What do I see that's magical around me? Your eyes go basically blind as everything, just like a magical overload. Okay, almost so as magical if the, whitewash. Almost as if the prison itself is magic. Aha. Uh -huh. She's just going to turn that off and just rub her eyes a little bit. Ow. And not to mention, it's people kind of handling the pitch black eye kind of well. Yeah, the what? Oh, the, has a your creep. pitch black eye. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. I've seen worse. Yeah. It's possible yeah. you've seen worse. Yeah. She's just going to go like. I cannot stay here, so whatever these tiny creatures are, I'll deal my I'll deal with them myself if I have to. And she's just gonna manifest a scimitar back on the way out. <laughs> Start leaving. He just says Some prisoners see you do that and they're just like looking at you like he's got a weapon. Gilly starts pushing on the door, but it seems kinda heavy. You probably need someone else to help you pull it or push it. Or someone that's bit massive. Oh, right. Get over here, you retarded gnome. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Uh... Yeah, okay. I was just checking something. <laughs> Boris, the low gnome, attempts to pelvic thrust the door to try and help. Unfortunately, you're not strong enough. <laughs> You better do a straight wrong. Pretty, pretty <laughs> pretty <close. laughs> I'll prove uh, you wrong, Nat Maris 20. is rolling a religion for something? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing if I can feel uh, my god here. Like, can I... Am I caught from my god, basically? You feel somewhat suppressed, but you can feel your god's presence there. Is it... It's there. Is it pretty clear that the doors swing our way or outward? It looks like the door swings your way. 
Let so that's why it. the pushing's not working then. <laughs> well, yeah, that and that the gnome has like no strength. I'm just gonna reach over the gnome's head and just pull the door open. It swings Put like it. that. As you crush the him. gnome. <laughs> the gnome doesn't move. He's going going between the wall and the stone and the door because Nala thinks All of right. him as some kind of like evil mischievous spirit with the way everyone's looking at him. With Nala's help, Boris oh Boris is out of the way. With Nala's help, Gilly manages to pull the door open and swings it swings it open. And as soon as he does, as soon as you do, you see a room full of goblins. It basically says, More meat, yeah, more meat! Warned. We will eat today! Get them! The first, the first, who's the ones that's talking that I can see? The one that's jumping forward and attacking Gilly. Uh, can I Eldritch Blast him while he's doing that? He got a surprise attack on Gilly real quick. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah, plus four to hit. Hit. Gilly, what's your dex again? Uh, what's my what? Your dex. Nine. So it's at minus one. So is your AC at ten? Nine? Yeah, it is. That hits you. Okay. Oh shit, I just noticed. I'm the only magic user who, can, who has the arcane focus with them. Dun dun dun. Hang on, you know I'm to hurt you. It does four damage to Gilly. And then, because I'm on original, battle begins, and we're just gonna use one of these. I'm quite literally only one who's not really hampered with the combat capabilities. <laughs> Shit, I just... Literally, I am. Fuck. We'll be fine. Everyone, roll initiative. Holy oh, shit! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nala's gonna have none of this shit. <laughs> you guys go, I'll follow up with two. Yeah, I'll just sit back here. Even since they got the first strike, they still just can't, apparently can't move very well. We'll put the archers on a different initiative. Six. Alright, order it. Dang it. I hate it when it bugs out and plays it twice. Hmm. All right, there are goblins, and they are attacking. And Nala, it is your turn. Okay, I'm just gonna go right there and chop the one here because I think this short little man. Literally, the only people that I recognize are the humans who I've heard tales about from my people, and that's about it. Uh, which one are you chopping? Uh, the one directly in front of me, on the left. Uh, this one, ping. All right. What are you attacking with? Your scimitar. Nineteen. You f you pull out your scimitar and you slice at it. And this one says, "It's got a weapon. It's got a weapon." Kill it. I n I've never. I always had my scimitar drawn. Yeah, it's almost so as if they're not used to people having weapons. Yeah, no, I meant by me drawing it is when you said that. Yeah, we're in prisoner clothing, but we have weapons. Yeah, it's almost as if the goblins aren't used to people having weapons. Stamens, like, just slice into this guy. Greywood. All right. As soon as I see them, I'm gonna go into immediate rage. She's at. And then I'm just gonna run in. Alright. You run in in a blind rage. Alright. 
and I guess I'll just punch one of them, punch the one in the north. So how do you do unarmed in 5e now? Uh, it is one damage plus strength mod. That's your damage. You still have to roll, roll to hit. Yeah, but you still have to roll, roll a hit. hit if you have it, you is, don't it's need strength it. plus proficiency you... because you're always proficient with unarmed strikes. Oh, okay then. All right. So that will hit whatever one you're punching. To the north. Yeah, right. the one in the north. Oh, he's so taking a lot punch of damage. It. You punch it s squarely across the jaw. So then it's one plus proficiency. And don't worry, it only had one HP left. Oh, no. One plus strength mod. One punch! Uh, then, screw it. Then I only do two damage. <laughs> Wait, you only have a strength of one? You guys can hear yeah. me, right? Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Yeah, yep. I said it only had one HP, so don't bother. Well, yeah, but no, he still needs to. Know, Muffin still yeah, needs but to. Yeah, I was still exactly. trying to figure. Oh yeah, I guess you got a point. So you just punch him squarely across the jaw, and you hear a snap as his neck just turns ninety degrees to the side, and he falls to the ground. So you, I'm guessing you're a dex-based probably and then. Oh yeah. Oh, by the way, any goblins or whatever around me within a five foot radius, you guys have advantage if you're in melee attack. Oh, so. That one's fucked. <laughs> Gilly. What did you so attack? do I? Yeah, do do I have a weapon or no? Am I using this? Uh, go to your go to your character sheet. Where is it? Class. Mm. I guess I didn't write it down, but you can do that weapon bond thing, mm -hmm. which is essentially exactly what uh, Braywin did. I get no, not Br Nala. You can summon your lance or your maul into your hands yeah. as a bonus action. Oh, might as well get my maul. Suddenly in Gilly's hand appears a giant hammer. Wow. Yes. And he attacks the, the goblin right in front of him. Unfortunately, the goblin has some armor. Unlike you unarmored folk. And he blocks it with his shield. Is internet Cause poopy? Because you had what? advantage. Oh wait, he's bro. got advantage, never mind. Yeah, he has advantage. So this, I forgot so about the that. 16. As he thinks he blocks it with his shield, but actually Gilly just smashes down harder. <laughs> Hitting for 8 damage. <clears throat> and just smashes him straight into the ground. And if you've ever seen my <laughs> Dark Souls video, it's basically that. <laughs> <laughs> Barking stick, huh? Yeah, it just slams him straight into the ground, and he doesn't—he doesn't move. <laughs> and I haven't even threw the orb and norm at you yet. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even thrown the norm at you yet. Uh, do you want to move anywhere? Do anything else, Gilly? Eternal. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. All right. Maris, you can hear quite a bit of hubbub to the northwest, as you assume the party has encountered goblins. Maris? Frosty? Maris died. <clears throat> Sorry, I was muted. Good job. Where the hell is my smithing stuff? I need those back. They are mine. And that's my turn. All right. <laughs> Move on to the archers. The archers step behind the step behind the pillars for a moment. They notice Gilly and Maris. Let's see. This one's against Maris. Nineteen versus unarmored. I'm going to assume that hits. Against Maris? Yes. Yes. It manages to shoot you in the side of the, in you like in your side of your torso for seven damage. Hey, fuck. Ugh. This one attacking Gilly. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. This Gilly, he kind of shoots you right, right in the neck, and he gets, uh, gets a good nick, and he does eleven damage. Oh boy! And then they step back behind the pillars. Boris. Okay. <clears throat> like to. Uh... How do I move it where it shows my feet going again? You press spacebar. Space. Hold space and while I'm doing it? No, you just press spacebar. Oh, okay. Okay, so I have to hold, hold it. Yeah. You gotta press it, then press it again. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, you have to leave that little yellow dot. You press okay. spacebar each time to give you yourself. Dots. Yeah, I, I see what I see what it did, but it didn't register staying. There. Okay, click, click, click. There we go. Okay. Oh. Uh, how, how does the magic weapon work again? Uh, let's see. Look. Is that where I can? That's the one that imbues your weapon with power. Spiritual weapon is the one that conjures a weapon in a spot. In other words, you have to have a weapon in order to... Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I know. Um, do I have any... I, I'm trying to understand some of these abilities. I'm He's like, got a schlong. <laughs> that is a weapon. <laughs> what what class are something? you? He's a cleric. Cleric. Okay. He's a war cleric. Okay. What, what does... Spiritual weapon have anything? No. That that means you 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 basically create a weapon out of thin air and it attacks your enemies for you. Yeah, you don't Ooh. wield it. You, you just make like a floating weapon that then strikes those you directed to strike. And you cast it without a arcane focus. Holy symbol. Eric, was it a spell? It's a spell. It's a spell. I'm jacking okay. your thing for a second, okay. Oh, okay, I'm not gonna click anything. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Go no, ahead. I already got what I needed. Oh, okay, so... So I had to concentrate to cast that? I I'm still understanding this. Uh, nope, it's just a vocal and somatic, so he has no material. You basically just say you cast it, but you need your holy symbol, which you... as Don't as have. yet have not found on your body. Oh, so I can't even do it. Yep. I took the, uh... Pact of the Sword. I'm the only one who hacks the spell focus with him because my Pact Blade can act as a spell focus. And your Pact Blade is literally Wait. just ethereal... Wait, it says I have something in my inventory. Yeah, I just put that there so I know what your oh. god was. Oh, okay, so that's not... Yeah, it's I, not my actually character there. technically hasn't found it there. Yeah. Okay. So we need to find... You cut out. Um... Boris, right now you can't really do much. Unless you want to go up and punch you things. Could, hey, you, you could take the weapon from the dead goblin. Mm -hmm. Use mm -hmm. that. Yeah, you could. What did the, go what did the goblin have? He has, they have scimitars. Yeah, I was going to... The goblin that's below me, I was going to stop an action wheel. Again, you cut out. Did you get closer? What? I'm just trying to see how many I moved because I was over here. Oh, you're I'm right next to one that's me. on the ground. I don't know, but I'm just trying to think of to go towards another one after I pick it up. Oh no, you've used up your movement speed. Yeah, yeah you have only another five feet because you have a movement. No, he's speed. a gnome. Oh, they had twenty-five. Gnomes of twenty-five feet because he's small. Small. Uh. I guess I'll just pick up the, the scimitar and 
go from there. All right. That's it. Boris picks up a scimitar and wields it menacingly. You ever see that scene in Aladdin where Boo picks up the sword? Mm-hmm. Basically that. Watch out! The monkey has a sword. You idiots! Hey, we all got swords! swords. <laughs> this goblin closes in on Braywin. So it's goblin time. It's goblin time. He tries to stab at you with some knives. 14 versus unarmored. You are raging, so you do take half damage. Nope, miss. Really? I have 16 unarmored. Wow, nice. Stupid barbarians. Rivar. Almost everyone has gone through the door. Apparently to kill goblins. Do we have Moki? Yes, we do. It's your turn, by the so. way. I'll tag along with them. Moki tags along. And that is my move action. And I don't think I actually have line of sight on anyone in any of my cantrip ranges. So all I can really do is say my goodbyes to Captain Bash. So I'm Captain Bosch. I'll be back here once the goblins have killed me. <clears throat> Interesting. We come to the top of the initiative order with Nala. Nala being frosty. Who's probably muted again? Uh, Bobo. That's Bobo. Oh, it's Bobo. Yeah, it's me. I was muted because I was snacking on something uh. loud. Maris is frosty. Yeah, so... Hmm, I could get that shield, but... I'm gonna do this instead to help speed along if I can get that shield later. Teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that you can see. And you can do that I in combat. Yep. All right. Where are you? I believe I can see this square, right? Yep, you can see that square. No. Bam! Surprise! Sword slash. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it just lets out this weird, this weird kind of goblin scrunt grunt. She equates that to the sounds of killing the goats on occasion back in her village. Do you Here want to goes. attack, then? You attack with your scimitar. It tries to block with its crossbow, but it kind of gets most of the swing, but not all of it. As you manage to do six points of slashing damage. <laughs> it is not looking very good for this goblin. And do you want to move before your turn ends? Um, nope, because right now I'm keeping this thing busy. Braywin. Okay. Will I pre will I get an attack of opportunity if I grab the weapon next to me? Uh, I think that would cause you being distracted, so yes. Screw it, I'll do it anyways. I go for the scimitar. Alright, you go for the scimitar of the goblin just to your side. As this one spends its reaction to attack you. So you won't be able to attack. No, his reaction, it missed. How badly does it miss? I meant for Braywin to do that. It misses so terribly. He, uh... The it goblin the, the goblin slices at you with your scimitar, but you you duck down and grab the scimitar to your, off the goblin to the east. And it slashes, it misses, and it just goes off balance and falls prone. 
And these are the things the prisoners were afraid of. Apparently. Well, again, remember, you guys are adventurers. You've got like... Ah, uh, it's not sub-10, what is it? Over-10. Super-10? Can't think. Anyways, you guys have above-average ability scores. That's why you can stand up to goblins. That's what I said. Nice. Heroic stat line. We're not like Bosch. Yeah, you're not like Bosch von Rossenberg of Dalmasca. Or Steve von Rossenberg of Dalmasca. Alright, bro, well, we you managed to grab... You managed to bend down and pick up the scimitar. You can still use an action and a move action. Oh, okay then. Well, also level 3, so we are almost too high above goblins. Yes. You slice with the scimitar, attempting to and wield I think, it. I think that's a miss. Yes, it is definitely a miss. I thought they got advantage. No, no, no. It's no only everyone else guys. gets advantage. Oh. So, yeah, and she has to hit to grant that advantage, too. No, I don't I don't have to hit. Oh, okay, so this goblin is now granting advantage, then. Well, you had advantage on it anyways, technically. Yeah, that's right. He was prone. Never mind. You do hit him. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, and, okay, you, and you obliterate him. Because prone. <laughs> Anyways, he you get up and you notice this goblin's just kinda face down on the floor trying to get up before you slash at him, but he just can't get there in time as you just slice his head off. Just immediately. And then do you want to move anywhere? Uh yeah. These uh these are pillars and they count as difficult terrain, so they will cost twice movement speed to pass through. Twenty five feet, yeah, there. that's good. Twenty feet. There. Yeah. Alright. Well because I went through Gilly, so Gilly. Everyone's getting all the kills. So technically you got one. No. Yes. Pop up here. Hello, my stab name is Gilly. Stab him in the back. Stab him Gilly, with a mole. Stabbing him in the back. Yes. You attempt to stab him with your mole, forgetting that you have your mole and not your lance. He definitely dodges to the side, looking at you like, "What are you trying to do?" <laughs> just, just kind of like, "What are you doing?" He doesn't care as you miss your attack. He then laughs at you in Goblin. <laughs> Maris. I understood that. <laughs> you say in Goblin, and he looks kind of surprised. I got punching for you. Where's my smithing stuff? Maris will not shut up about her smithing stuff. Well, it's the only thing I have. I'm a smith. I'm nothing without my smithing stuff, so... Uh, what? Uh, punching! You managed to punch the goblin. Again, you're just very good at punching these goblins right square in the jaw. Full damage! Uppercut! You Tiger give uppercut. him an uppercut! and dislocate his head from his body. That was a very fierce punch. Punching seems to be the most effective against them. Oh, this everyone, one... I, oh, I just keep on leaving goblins at 1 HP for the next person to follow up with. <laughs> Kill <still>. Pretty much. <laughs> this one seeing the much hated enemy of the goblins, the dwarves. He pulls out his scimitar and it attempts to attack Gilly. And he connects and does 1d6 plus 2 slashing damage. As Gilly takes 6 points of damage. Ouch. As Gilly is sliced with the scimitar, he can't hold his own and falls to the floor, unconscious. Gilly? 
Brr. Okay. One's already down. He's unconscious. Ow! And then the goblin. It's a very special scimitar. And then the goblin moves very quickly, almost as if with a very, the very sort of practiced movements. No. Well, the current layout, no matter what he does, he's going to probably provoke an attack. Almost as if he does it. Almost as if he's been practiced at moving in combat. He dodges through Braywind's attacks and moves to a better position to this corner uh, of the he room. Also provoke, he also provokes a Maris. He oh, you think you would provoke an attack of opportunity, but he's just too fast. <laughs> Almost as if they can take the withdrawal action as a bonus action. Oh, Rogue. Okay, I can get to him. And it is Boris's turn. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay. So, my turn? Yes. So, I just realized something that I... You, you guys all said I couldn't do anything. But how come I couldn't cast my Guiding Bolt? Because you need your Holy Symbol. Ah, damn. Okay. So you I can cast it. Minor Illusion because that's just being a gnome. You can punch him. That seems to be working well. Well, if I walk over the bodies in front of me, that does that slow me down at that all? That does or? slow you down. You could. That'll be 10, 15, 25 on I mean, the goblin. <laughs> you could go there and then make your movement. Yeah, but my max is what, 25? 25. 25. And it takes 10 feet to go through a uh, rough terrain. So essentially, you, you could go. stand on top of. Or you, you could stand go left with. This or you go diagonal real quick, then you can get to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't use the ruler. The ruler lies to you. Yeah, you ruler, it. it lies. 10, 20. 20, 20 Just 20. count the squares. Yeah. If, you, if you do this. If you did I that, twice. that would work. Whoa, 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 whoa! What I'm the just fuck moving you to show you the path. Calm down. I didn't see anything because you. Th I was in the middle of making my path, and your path went mm. blah 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 blah. In a circle. All right, so if you go there, and then there, and then there, and then there, that's 25 feet. Yeah, you All right, make... I do that. Yeah. You do that. You step okay. over some of the bodies and get in close to this goblin. Alright, where, where's my roll for the, the scimitar? Do I just need a roll? What do you... Roll a... It's strength plus proficiency. If you are so... proficient in martial weapons. Just roll 1d20 plus 1. As a war cleric, he should be proficient with martial, so it should be... Yeah, I thought I was. Yeah, yeah. I'm roll 1d20 plus 1. Because your strength score plus is proficient. minus 1. Oh. oh. Wow. Okay. You get in close and try and hit the goblin, but you can't really will the scimitar very well. So unfortunately, it, it dodges your attack. Did he cut out again? Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 I said, yeah, unfortunately, it dodges your attack. Well, you said something about... You're wielding not very the good at wielding the out. scimitar because it's, it's kind of a big weapon. You also look at the light weapon so you can even pick it up. All right, those goblins are dead, so it's Rybar's turn. Five round the corner, and four out of five goblins are dead, and the fifth appears to be running away. So, you know, these guys are worth sticking with. They're making my job real easy. <clears throat> but luckily for me, they haven't done anything, so I can still help out. I'm going to wave my hands all mysterious-like, and a Ooh. hand is going to come out of the ground right about here. And grab that goblin. Hopefully. Unfortunately, Probably the hand not. misses. You can't really see because the gnome is in the way. And you 
didn't want to hit him because he could be used for your master plans in some future endeavor, I'm sure. But the important part is there was a hand, so I am credit to team. Mm -hmm. There was an attempt made. And Rivar, as you do it, you can kind of feel as if your magical abilities have been suppressed a little bit. Almost like there's some kind of wet cloth over your magic. You're not sure if that affected your ability to attack it or not. You could just feel it there. Boss, they have magical water on them. Cast more lightning bolts. Nala. Okay. She's going to move so when she gets a clear line of sight here. That would make it uh, 10. That's 10, 15. Maris in is going to hear her mumble this out loud to herself as Nala just says, Yes, I'm aware I can use those, but I still don't understand what this is. As she casts Eldritch Blast. Lady is a little crazy. Okay. Yeah, she just. Pew, pew, pew. Hey, Burst force from the tip of the blade and slash toward the goblin. You cut out during the middle of that. I think it's just Discord. Yeah, I think it's just yeah, Discord. Probably. Internet. You shoot out at the goblin, but unfortunately, you miss. As you're not. Yeah, I was. You also feel this sort of dampening power on your magic. Mm -hmm. But you are unaware that Rivar felt it too. Just that you feel yeah, it. Yeah, so that's 10, 15, 16, uh, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And she continues walking over after she's casting the thing. Where did, they, where did I cut off on Discord? Exactly. In the middle of, in the middle of describing your spell. Firing the Eldritch Blast. Okay, yeah, just a blast of ethereal energy just mm. flies forth turns from the tip and just heads towards Bray the goblin. One. Everyone's closing in on this guy. goblin. Oh, that's just a DM note. Oh, okay. <laughs> let me I was like, I'm gonna kill that one too. The one that's kill inside the walls. Me. Kill me, <laughs> please! <laughs> there, I switched it to the GM layer. <laughs> No, no, we want to fight the wall goblin. We want to want the one that's glitched through the terrain. <laughs> I know, there's just a hand sticking out. <laughs> wait, wait, guys. This thing called the Endless Dungeon, I think I know who, I figured out who built it. Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the Endless Dungeon. This is the Eternal Prison. Either way. So Eternal Prison. <laughs> Either way. Eternal built it. Either way. Eternal built it. Doesn't Whoa. matter. Bethesda's the one behind it because of the glitching goblin. Braywin comes in with a scimitar. Dang it, phone. Can you not Gosh, dang go it. off for just like an hour? Comes in with a scimitar and slices at the goblin, immediately just taking his head straight off his shoulders, not giving him any quarter. And the goblin, all the goblins, including the one on the wall, are all dead. Okay, we, so we do get experience for the go uh, wall goblin, right? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you just said we slayed him. Gilly, make a death saving throw. Uh, Out of curiosity, does anyone know proficient in the heal skill? I am. Okay. Oh. I can shake him. You, you take one stuff. failure. Okay. Okay. Another one? No. So, it's he Maris's on turn. the ground seems to be dying. Well, I'll do my best and try to keep him from dying with my medicine skill. Try to stabilize him. Gilly, you attempt to make some... Bend, to my, mend some wounds, bind up some cuts and bruises and lacerations. Thankfully, you managed to stop the bleeding as Gilly yeah, stabilizes. No. I have one HP. Did I cut out again? Yeah. A little bit, but we heard the end bit. Yeah, you basically, you mend the wounds and keep everything from bleeding out. Keep Gilly from bleeding out. That's good. Gilly, you wake up. Your head still hurts. 
And now you, the, some of your blood is outside of your body. I'll come back to the life of the living. I'm going to say that, turn around, and loot the goblins. <laughs> what I assume is crossbow. Or bow. Which yes. He had. All the goblins have... All the goblins have a short bow and a scimitar, as well as small leather armor and a shield. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the, a shield. The, uh, I, I call a short me, bow. Because of my size, is that going to affect the AC of the shield? Uh, What's your size? I'm I'm a medium size, but I'm 7 foot 3, and these no. are goblins are small creatures. No, it's not going to affect it. Okay, so it's a plus two. Okay, I'll stick, I'll take one of the shields as well. The leather armor is probably not going to fit me because these are all small creatures. They're they're kind of no like armor. they're kind of like small leather shields. They're not very well made, but I, I mean it's it's better than nothing. Yeah, better than. All right, so the goblins lay defeated, and to the north. Or not to the north. The north is a wall? To the north is a wall. Anyways, as I was saying, having defeated these goblins with these with these strange people, you realize that none of you know anyone's name. By the way, guys, I'm Boris. I well, know you who you are! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> you know you say that, but you're Boris not literally. Them, so. Uh, you guys would have... Nala did say her full name earlier. So you know Nala's name, but who else is there? Name's Maris. Blacksmith, the occupation. Wow, that's terrible. <clears throat> Should we, uh, get some of the other prisoners to help us with the next room? Oh, you guys seem like you could handle it pretty well yourselves. If they're not willing to fight for their own freedom, then they may stay here. Ooh, burn. Uh, oh, I have an idea. I'm gonna strip one of the oh. goblins, drag him over to the whatever mess room, and I'm just gonna throw it in the middle of the room and say, You're free! <laughs> oh, but what kind of armor did they have? Leather, Leather armor. I'm but going to put that on too, because it's better than nothing. But it's a bit small, because goblin size. You just kind of place it Still not nothing. You just kind of yeah, place it on know. yourself at, you know, the most important parts. Dang this. Okay, you know what? We're just going to say screw it. We're just going to get rid of these stupid drawings. We're just going to search. Okay, so does everyone introduce your, yourselves to the party? Pretty much, I'm going to guess. Aside yep. from uh, uh, Gilly over there. I'm just gonna grumble and be like, ah, Gilly. Way. You silly Gilly. What? Couldn't hear you over your drunken mumble. Silly Gilly? If you be, I'd be your Gilly. friend. <laughs> there appears to be a lever moving around by the door that isn't there. Ooh. As you notice to the south, there seems to be a very conspicuous lever. It's not trying to hide. And above it is a plaque. Oh, this is plaque also in common? Say. The plaque is in common. It says, If you have it, you don't need it. If you need it, you don't have it. You need it to get it. And you certainly need it to get more of it. That's gonna go quickly over Nala's head. Also, I gotta ask, with a minus two to intelligence, am I even literate? Well, you're a barbarian, right? Yes? No? Hello? The hoods made on the Great Plains. Yeah, you cut out. I'm a warlock. I'm not a barbarian, but oh, okay. I come from a barbarian-like culture. No, you, you, would, you would know how to read. I would, okay, I would say you would know how to read common. Okay, so I don't know how to read giant, but I can speak giant. Yeah, you would basically, you would know how to speak and read common. I would say you know how to speak and read giant, so you know, basically, you can communicate with other species 
to learn where to kill things. And the lever is kind of protruding out on sort of like a half circle, and it looks like it could go to the left the or... Door. What? I'm gonna start kicking the door. You but attempt to wall. kick the door, but it doesn't seem to budge. The uh, lever can be moved to the left or to the right. The riddle above the lever, I'm just pulling the lever back and forth, seeing what happens. <laughs> As you pull the lever back and forth, both doors start opening and then cl immediately closing as you're switching the lever to the other side. Okay, I'm gonna just oh, go the full- the doors are opening. We don't need to I'm solve gonna... the riddle. I'm going to go full forward with and just push the thing until the doors open. Well, only one door opens at a time. It's either oh. left or right. Well, it depends uh, which way you put in the lever. Okay, I'm just gonna pull the lever all the way back, and which 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 door is the one that Braywin is in front of? Braywin is in front of this door. No, I mean lever wise. Lever. Border back. Uh, are you smart enough to figure that out? That's the question. <laughs> Presumably, she has functioning eyes. I have functioning <laughs> eyes. I'm, I'm not. Dad, stupid. You pull that the I'm lever and put it to the to the to the west side, and that door opens. Okay, so she said she's going to call out to you to take a look underneath the door and tell us what you see, and then it, I'll it, open up the, the other door. One. The door slides left to right; it doesn't open oh. up or down. Well, either way, she, I can only I can open it part way, and then she can take a look, like kind of peek through the cracks. Yeah, just open it enough so you can look through, with, but something can't come in and out. If you if you if you throw the lever to the left or the right side, that door just starts to open. There's no halfway. Well, yeah, but what he means is that he's going to slightly let it open, and then he's going to immediately switch the switch to have it closed again That's before fine. it opens completely. That's fine. Yeah, just w no, enough for her to take a look. Okay. Yeah, do that. Sure. Why not? Brandon, what was your class again? There's, Barbarian. There's one. He opens the door, and you take a look, and you see darkness. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Discord, but they're just cutting out. That's, yeah. that's it's terrible. Yeah. Everybody out. I think, yeah, I think Discord's having a major hit. Yeah, the RTC connection is way out of whack right now. Hmm. Alright, I'm just gonna monitor it then. Uh, the door opens, and Braywin, all you see is darkness. Um, can I roll an insight to get a little bit, um, kind of hint on the, um... Yes, you may. You, you can, can either roll insight, roll insight or you can roll arcana. I shall roll insight. And while he does that, I will roll arcana. Figure out the uh, riddle. Both Maris and Rivar, you notice that beyond the door is just darkness it's very similar to a sort of it's very similar to a spell you're sure you've heard of called darkness that basically snuffs out light so it's very similar to uh and then you got cut off Maybe you should just type it out rio it's very similar to a spell called darkness in fact it very well could be darkness well considering all i see is darkness and i have dark vision yeah it's probably magical since you do have dark vision, you would not, you would know that it is a magical darkness. I'm gonna go ahead and cast dancing lights into the first bits of darkness. Uh, what does dancing lights do? Is that the, uh... Right. Thank you. Four torch side lights, make them appear as torches. I'm going over there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the orbs. Alright. I'm going to look up the darkness spell, because I think that will work. I don't think it's that easy to banish the darkness spell.
If any of this Nature spell's Sight area overlaps there. with an area of light created by a spell of second level or lower, the spell that created the light is dispelled. Sorry. Oh, so this so is just yeah, a the... cantrip. Yeah. So yeah, you attempt to move some lower. lights through the darkness, but they just kind of fade into it. And you can feel the, n the magical energies disappear. Mm. That doesn't happen normally. Your, your, magic trickery, is, but... your magic is too weak. Your magic is too weak. At least I have control of my magic. Ooh. Some ambience here. I know I've got <clears throat> There's a magic war going on. I don't want to be a part of it. So you can sit around posturing and debating about which door to go through, or you can pick one and try and escape. I vote posturing. Are there any signs like above the doors? There's just that one plaque above the lever. <coughs> hey, um, uh, what do I need to do to cast second wind? That's just a that's just a fighter skill. You can, you can do it like whenever as a bonus action. Yeah. So it's one d ten plus my level HP. Yeah, which is three. So one d ten plus three. I don't know, Maris. Is it? Uh, I mean the. Black doesn't say anything and it has underneath the you got them. But is there any other plaques like on the side? Yeah, because th this riddle just... Yeah. There's just the one plaque above the lever, which you know opens doors. Why does it have a riddle then? Who riddle says it's a riddle? Great decorations. Who says it's a riddle? The so, riddle, is, the riddle is a riddle because said there's no need for a riddle. I didn't say it was a riddle. I said it was a plaque with a thing on it. <laughs> so <laughs> we're all sitting here pondering it. So have we looked at both sides of this this level. Yeah, both sides. Um, You've looked at the left well, side, not the right side. Okay, I'll open up the right side now. You open up the right side door. Who is looking inside? If you're looking well, inside, do a perception check. You see a great elder black dragon. Well, he's oh, about to, if you guys spend any more time on this so-called riddle. <laughs> you said it was a riddle! <laughs> Maris sees everything! Reva yeah, and everything. Maris, you notice that there is a blackness on the side of the door. Okay. No, here too! Oh. <laughs> Well, this blackness is as good as the other blackness. Let's go. Gilly, Gilly re restores nine HP. Okay, then. He gets so his second wind. I'm just gonna keep the uh, level there, though, and just let the door completely open. Then, as you as you put the lever to one side and let go of it, the door stays open for a while. You don't need to stand there and hold it. Which which way are you going? Uh, we don't need what? You don't need to hold the lever. I yeah, know, I okay. figured that. So okay. one of us should stay on this side just in case if we all travel through, it closes behind us. I nominate yeah, the we'll gnome. Thanks for I am staying back. Side. And I'm going to walk through. <laughs> Alright. You walk through and step into the darkness and you hear a click, like a chunk, and uh, whoever was holding the lever at the time can kind of feel it vibrate. As you feel as if something... Can we just ask the prisoners to do that, you know? As you, as you feel as if something kind of locked in place. I don't know what I'm seeing, so I'm just going to put my token there. Alright, Nala moved in. Nala's inside, and Braylon's inside. Maris moved inside. Is everyone moving in? Gilly? Yeah, 
Eternal. You're muted. He's, his, his kids are probably... Yeah, my wife... Everything's going loud here. But, yeah. But Are you moving in with everyone else? Back on my screen. You cut out. It's black on my screen. Yeah, we, yeah. we all went in. Everyone went in. Are you moving right, into the room, in. too? Okay. Go ahead. I need to... I need to interact with the... It. Forgot to move the map on uh, Twitch. So basically, everyone just went into this room here. Take a look. As you go inside, you hear a chunk, and the darkness just kind of fades. And you're inside this room, and the the door closed behind you. Everyone make a perception check. <laughs> I'm amazed that the door closed on its own. <sighs> we appear to be in a room. Let's see, who are we missing? Oh. Is that everyone? No, who are we missing? <laughs> Spread everyone out so I know this is a... Nala. Nala, no, let's make a perception check. Okay. <laughs> Alright, anyone that got above a 10 will notice that this floor is strewn with skeletons and what appears to be some rotten clothes and just all around dead things. No yeah, way to like prisoner size skeletons or goblin skeletons. Well, there's a few here and a few there. Anyone that got above a twenty will notice the spikes coming down oh, from yeah. the ceiling. Um all I heard was Yeah. Well mm -hmm. and then you cut out. Mm hmm I said, Well, there's a few he asked if they're human or goblin skeletons, and I said, Well, there's a few here and a few there. Anyone that got above a 20 will notice the spikes rapidly falling from the ceiling. Oh, okay, so yeah, back to the... Uh, that door is closed. It closed behind you. Goddamn Discord. I wonder if there's any so, way to I don't know why you door. moved out the door closed behind That door closed behind you. I never heard that. Yeah, See, if the Discord. Flash taught us anything. That also, this is why I said we should keep someone outside. I don't know why someone I, followed us. As you begin to continue arguing with each other about whose fault it was that you picked that door, the spikes come down and impale every single one of you, killing every single one of you. Well, that was on that climax, eh? Yeah. Alright, well, that was a quick game. <laughs> Gilly. You wake up inside your cell. You're not sure how you got there. I had a feeling you were going to go this route when you get there. Your head hurts. This is fucking Dark Souls. <laughs> okay, guys. Rivar, you awaken <laughs> inside your cell. You're not sure how you got there. The, the hay is very nice. Nicer than what you're accustomed to. Maris, you awaken inside your cell. You're not sure how you got there. Braywin, you awaken inside your cell. Your wrists hurt, but you are not bound, as you were last time. Can we push the skip tutorial and go to the Nala. combat? No, you awaken inside your cell to a to a gnome eyeing you creepily. <laughs> quickly just manif am I tied down again? You are not tied down again. Okay, I'm gonna you all quick... yeah, waking up inside your cell, disoriented. You all died. It Looks was like we're in terrible. You all died terrible, horrible deaths, and you're sure it stung. But just as darkness was closing in, you woke up and find yourself inside your cells once more. After orienting yourselves you finally remember why you're here you are the worst of the worst 
Only the most terrible of criminals are taken to the eternal prison, where none are allowed to die. Simply wander the halls forever. Welcome to the eternal prison. Okay then, well... I don't think this is a good JoJo moment, honestly. 